All right, uh, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to just do a couple quick exercises working with the binary search tree data structure, uh, specifically just the naive binary search tree here, no rebalancing, uh, just practicing adding and removing and, uh, uh, and satisfying the invariant. Um, so I've actually just got some random numbers here that this is what I'm gonna work with. Uh, and I'm gonna just consider add or adding them in this sort of random order. Now these are the random numbers I generated in an earlier video. Um, if you go back and take a look at that if you want to learn a little bit more about random number generation. Uh, but here we're going to just again uh, work with the numbers by doing our binary search tree add. Um, now the first couple adds are usually pretty easy. Uh, now remember in binary search tree with no rebalancing we're never going to reposition any nodes. Once they're there, they're there. So unlike you know, the heat practice we did in an earlier video where we're doing bubbles up and sink down. Here we're just making sure we add the node in the right location. So I'm going to, you know, just continue here. 11 is going to be our root forever. Hopefully it's not a bad root. Uh, my left node here looks like I'm going to get a 4 here. Okay. Uh, 21 is greater. So I'm going to put that over there. 25 is greater than 11 and it's greater than 21. So it goes over here. Okay, our 15, uh, greater than 11, it's actually less than 21. And yeah, we have space for it right here. So we'll add it. All right, 14, so far so good. Greater than 11, it is less than 21. And it is less than 15 belongs here. All right, it seems like our right subtree is getting a little bit deep, but hey, it looks like this one's going to help us. Uh, less than 11, less than, than 4. This is sort of balancing us out a little bit. We haven't really said what it means to be balanced for a binary search tree. We know what it means to be completely balanced, but uh, this looks a little bit better. Our 9 here, less than 11, greater than 4, so it goes there. Our 20, okay, greater than less than, greater than, all right, not that bad so far. Okay, a two, that's less than, that's less than, it's greater than. Things are getting tangled here. Hopefully they don't get too tangled, but you know, these random numbers rarely, rarely behave themselves. Uh, we've got greater than, less than, greater than, less than. Okay, 17, 26, greater than, greater than, and greater than. All right, room for it. Notice there's always room for it. I don't really need to say that um, because there's always going to be a position where it belongs. We just need to find where it is. So let's go. We just did 26, so let's finish our last four here. 13, we got greater than, less than, less than, and again, right here, belongs. Okay, like I said, there's always one place where something belongs. Notice I've got an 11 here, I've got a 13 here. If I had a 12, well, it belongs right here. This spot is sort of waiting for a 12. Now, there's no 12 in my list, but if there was one, this is where it belongs. Okay, 7. Uh, less than, greater than, less than. Okay, we're getting a little clogged up here, so I'm being careful. 24, uh, greater, greater, less. And finally, 30, uh, greater, 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 30. So as you can see, adding is not too difficult. Searching is, is straightforward, so I'm not going to really practice that. Um, you will maybe notice a couple things. OK, first of all, remember, minimum is going left all the way. We can go all left all the way. It gets us to this one. This is our minimum. Even though it has a right child, those are all greater. So that must be our minimum. Maximum is, is right all the way, so that's our 30, okay? And then also remember our in-order traversal, 1, 2, 4, 7, 9, 11, 13, 14, 15, 17, 20, 21, 24, 25, 26, 30, gives it to us in order, okay? The other thing that I want to talk about is about the depth. So let's take a look at our depth here. First of all, usually I like to do zero base depth. Uh, so if we're going to do zero base depth here, um, first of all, what depth are we at? Zero, one, two, three, four. It looks like we have depth four. 
Now, we might ask ourselves, is that good? Well, what's the worst? Well, uh, maybe you can see, I got 404 here, there's 16 nodes here. So with a zero base depth, uh, my max is 15. That's if I just went one, two, four, seven, and so on, all the way down the right hand side. One long pole will give me 15. Now, of course, I got these in random order, hoping that it wouldn't give me that. So, one answer to the question is for good is, gee, it's a lot better than 15. That seems pretty good. Okay, so so far, so good. I'd say, yeah, I like it. Okay, but then the question is, is it the best? Or in other words, what's the min then? What can we do for the min? Okay, and again, how many nodes do I have here? I have 16. And actually this one, it, it, I mean, the answer is it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. We can probably look at it and see it's pretty good. There's not too many spaces that are not filled in. In fact, there are, there are two. I'm going to put a little question mark here, a little question mark here. If I move, say, these two up there, we would still have to put one of these nodes down on this level. And that makes sense because for this depth, if we had depth 3, the maximum number of nodes we could have would be 2 to the n plus, or so let's say d, plus 1 minus 1 equals 15. The most number of nodes we could fit in that depth is 15. We have 16 nodes. So depth 4 is not just good, it's actually the min. It's the best. So we've actually done pretty good here. We've got lucky. All right, what I'm thinking is, what happens if we add these nodes into a different order? And maybe what I'm just going to do is I'm still going to go right to left. I'm just going to start at the bottom instead. So I'm going to go, this time we get 13. Also probably a pretty good no, we already know this is a little bit skewed more in the 20s it looks like, but here we go, 13. So I'm starting at the bottom, 13. To my left, I'm going to put a 7. Maybe I'll scratch these as I go. Uh, 24. And a 30. Okay. Next one up, 20. Okay, greater than, less than. Um, that's a 2, not a 12. Uh, less than, less than. 17, that's greater than, less than, less than. 26, that's greater than, ooh, that's, oops, huh. let me make sure I get my, my heads on straight here. 26, that's greater than, that's greater than, and that's less than. Okay, that goes there. Are 15 uh, greater than, less than, less than, less than? Lots of less thans here. 15, okay. 14, same thing. Greater than, less than, less than, less than, less than, less than. Okay. R1, less than, less than, all the way down to our left. That's our minimum. We know that. R9, well, that's less than 13. It's greater than 7, so it belongs here. All right, our 11, oh, maybe should have left myself a little more space. That's the right child of the nine there. What about my four? Less than, less than, uh, greater than. Okay, 21, greater than, less than, greater than, and 25. Okay, greater than, greater than, less than. Okay, now we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, uh, not so great doing it in this other order. Well, we got the maximum last time or the best rather than the minimum last time. So our depth this time of 5, not much worse. Again, remember the worst we could have done was 15. One of the takeaways I want uh, from this quick little couple examples is even though the worst case depth for our binary search tree is going to be order n. If the order that we add our elements in is random, usually, and I'm going to wave my hand at this a little bit, but we can do some math, 
the expected depth is log n. It's actually not base 2, but the constants don't matter, remember. So um, the, the, the expected depth of our binary search tree will be very close to this good one if you add them in randomly. Now, of course, there's a, there's a chance that though you get an unlucky random ordering and you get one of these order n, but most of the time you'll get log n. And you can practice this if you like um, using a random, random binary search tree. Uh, you can just sort of randomly generate over and over again and see what kind of depths you get given your random numbers. And it's very rare that you're going to get a real deep one like 15. And it's very common to get, you know, getting exactly four might be a little tricky in this case. Well, not really in this case because uh, we got 16 nodes that might make it a little easier to hit the target. Um, but uh, getting, uh, getting, you know, four, five, or six is your depth probably really really common if you if you do it uh, okay so um, that's practicing some of our ads um, maybe let's just take a moment to, to practice some deletes all right let's start with this node and let's I don't know I just picked random I, I thought hey let's get rid of this 20 okay so this 20 is is a node that has two children so what are we gonna do uh, in this case. So if we want to delete the 20, we need to promote some, some respectable uh, alternative. Now, it, it's going to be either the largest in the right, looks like it's the 21, it's the only one in the right, or the smallest um, in the left, which uh, I just said that backwards. It's either going to be the smallest in the right, which is the 21, or the largest in the left, which is the 17. Now actually, because I'm a little lazy here, um, I'm going to promote the 21. It looks like it's going to be easier, like this. Okay. Um, another real easy delete, maybe I'll delete out my 9 here. I'm just trying to clean things up. If I want to delete out the 9, what happens? Oh, this 11 gets promoted into its position. Okay, this is this is fine. Maybe I'll do one more. Um, I could delete out my 17 here. I want to delete out the 17 now. Um, I would have to promote out uh, the 15 and the 14, which I can just do like that. Okay, but then let's let's try something else. Then let's say, okay, let's go for the kill. We'll delete the root. We want to delete the root again. We want to find a, a you know a suitable replacement. Is either going to be the largest one in the right or the left subtree? To go there, we'd start at the root of the left subtree and go right as far as possible, so the 11. Or we go to the right subtree, start at the root and go left as far as possible, so the 14. Again, doesn't really matter which one we pick. Um, I guess I went you know right last time let's go right again then usually you're consistent if you uh, if you're coding this in you don't you know sort of randomly go one or the other so I'm gonna swap the 13 with the 14 and delete the 13 from below here leaving us with the 14 up above okay. again maybe let's do one more time let's try and delete out the 24 so what are my suitable replacements it looks like largest in the left is 21 but smallest in the right is 25 we've been going on the right so far so let's swap it with the 25 we'll go 25 here we'll put the 24 here but again then we delete it so i'm just going to delete that out okay so when working with our binary search tree um, again we want to practice working with our ads we want to practice our our deletes and then we want to be conscious of the depth of the tree as we're working with it uh, and you know just thinking to ourselves is this a tree that's closer to that linear maximum depth or is it uh, closer to that nice squat logarithmic minimum depth all right uh, thanks for watching and in the next video we'll take a look at uh, we'll take a look at uh, rebalancing self or self balancing uh, binary search trees 
So uh, once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.